Jim Morrison, lead singer of The Doors and a true rock and roll icon. One of the original members of the 27 Club and a man who was just as mysterious in life as he was in death. He was also the owner of a 1967 Shelby GT500. And just like its owner, no one is exactly sure what happened to it. This is the mystery of Jim Morrison's missing Mustang. In 1967, The Doors released their self-titled debut album. Light My Fire hit number one on the music charts, and just like that, The Doors were certified rock stars. Elektra Records president Jack Holtzman was so happy with the band's success, he offered to buy each member a gift of their choice as a thank you. Robbie Krieger and John Dinsmore both requested new musical instruments and recording equipment. Ray Manzarek asked for a thoroughbred horse, and as for Jim, he requested a horse of a different kind. Jim Morrison's Mustang was a 1967 Shelby GT500 with a 428 and a 4-speed transmission in night mist blue with parchment interior, which according to the Marty Report is one of only 47 cars made in 1967 with that color combination. For Jim, owning a Shelby was a dream come true. He had wanted one ever since he rode in a 1965 Shelby GT350 that belonged to his friend and hairdresser, Jay Sebring. And on a quick side note, this is the same Jay Sebring who would later be murdered by the Manson family on August 9, 1969, alongside Sharon Tate. And on that note, let's get back to Jim and the missing Shelby. According to his friends and people who knew him best, the Mustang was the only car Jim owned and apparently he drove the living hell out of it. He was known to get pissed drunk and tear down the streets of Sunset Boulevard on a pretty regular basis. Which of course got him involved in several accidents. It's reported that while he owned the car it was in the body shop at least five times. And that brings us to one of the theories about what exactly happened to Jim's Mustang. The first theory goes like this. One night in Hollywood, California, Jim was out driving his car, drunk, as usual, headed to the Whiskey-A-Go-Go. And while on his way there, hit either a tree or a telephone pole, depending on who you ask. Jim left the car exactly where he wrecked it, and proceeded into the Whiskey-A-Go-Go anyway. When he returned, the car was gone, never to be seen again. Some people say that this accident resulted in the car being totaled, and it was later crushed. But other people believe that this accident only resulted in minor damage and that the car was stolen off the side of the street while Jim was in the bar. Another theory is that in 1971, Jim parked his Mustang in a parking lot and left for Paris with his girlfriend Pam. And it was in Paris at the age of 27 that Jim would pass away. And when Jim never returned for the car, it was eventually towed away and auctioned off. Okay, so there's one more theory about the fate of the car, and it's a bit far-fetched, but just try to stick with me. As you've probably heard, there is a pretty popular theory that Jim Morrison faked his own death. It is a fact that the only person Jim Morrison actually knew who attended his funeral was his manager, and his manager later said that he never saw the body. All he saw was a sealed coffin get put in the dirt. And just a few years back, Jim's friend and bandmate, John Dinsmore, had this to say when he was asked about Jim's death. It was a closed casket, hence the rumors, you know. And Jim was a crazy guy who no one I've ever met would be more capable of faking their death than him. With that being said, the theory is Jim Morrison was tired of the rock and roll celebrity lifestyle. So he went to Paris for the sole reason of faking his own death. 
and that the reason the car is missing is because Jim still has it. The truth is, no one really knows. But what we do know is, none of Jim's friends or family have any idea where the Mustang is. The only piece of the car that's been seen since Jim's death is the registration. Made out to Jim Morrison and dated for April 30th, 1969. So what do you think happened? Do you think the car was totaled and later crushed? Or maybe stolen and stripped for parts? Or maybe it's sitting in the desert, just waiting to be discovered? Or do you think Jim's alive and he's got the car tucked away quietly with him? I hope one day we find out. The car is a piece of automotive and music history. But as of right now, it's just a mystery. Jim. We'll miss you.